is really going on today. I am so scared. I don't really understand the world we are living. Somebody you will see today, tomorrow you will hear that the person is no more. Evils, Biafras generally have lost another legend. Important people going. Onyeka Oweno, I believe you know this woman. Information reaching us is that she went to perform in Lagos and she slumped. That is the end. That is why I keep on telling us, be prepared. Prepare your way because nobody knows tomorrow. In fact, tomorrow is very, very far. In a minute, we don't know what is going to happen. I welcome you to God's Loves You channel. Anywhere you are watching this video, if it's your first time and you like what we are doing, kindly subscribe, put on your notification bell to all notifications. This will enable you to know when we upload a new video. So, this video is a very interesting one and I would like it and every one of us to listen. I am here, we are going to listen to this video together if i tell you that fear no they catch me na lie i they lie let's listen they refuse to take care of the hospital in Igbo land they rather prefer to take the money to london and when they die in london they are about to bring them back the same problem is what happened to uh ekure maru ekure maru now is lavishing in jail this is a prominent Igbo man that make money that is capable for them to build a hospital, to build a hospital in that Igbo land so that they can be able to fund our people and get the best doctor to take care of them. But just a brief illness, they find your body is gone. You went on with an old man, okay, you went on with at least somebody who have had about 82 years, no problem for 82 years, man. But what we saw today, you know, um, it's kind of hurting. As I said, is there anything have uh, is there anything going on somewhere that they're picking now is a prominent Igbo man who know who's next? We don't know who be next. What happened now? I know a lot of us is against Ifan Yoba, some of his decision, you know, by arming some people from uh Newi. You know, Ifan Yoba, you know, prominently is a prominent guy that advocate very well. You know, we know he has a voice. But the voice is being used against his brothers. That is the problem we are having with Ifanyuba. Ifanyuba's voice is not to elevate his brothers. His voice is mainly for his own political selfish gain. Ifanyuba was accused as a mastermind on Nandikano's Kina from Kenya. Although he had came out to he have came out to say he's not part of that. But still, we have this incident that Ifan Yoba was involved, considering his connection with the government. That thing has not been clear up to today. Even our brothers have asked the question, you know. None of them, Nanikan, even Nanikan lawyer have never given us complete view on who Mazi Nanikan went to see under that Kenya airport before he got arrested. There's somebody that called him, he went to go pick in the airport before he got arrested. So he found you have never given us this clear vision on what happened. And we heard that he is among the guys that paid for private jet that they brought Nandi Kano back. He made the connection. He knows when Nandi Kano. And we know that he found you run through um, um, he found a, a, a for who happened then to be IPOP counsel. That was a painful one. But those that words, you know, we not to mom his death we can because he's a prominent Igbo man you know um it's just nothing good to take out those prominent men because in one word that you need them you need their finance you need their voice seeing them gone this way is a painful thing within the space of one week two prominent Igbo men gone uh, this is something that we have to sit down and is it for good or for bad and we know that um, the African government has always prayed that those that want Biafra not to come will not stay to see Biafra. For those that say Biafra to come over their dead body, they may not see. So like I will be posting a video soon because the African government in Ezra, they actually went to some strong place. They are lobbyists, you know, catching up with some great men. So I will post that video. But what happened to Ifanyuba is something that we need to really mourn. If I we know that he's preparing to contest Anambra election against um, Vicent and uh, 
Charles Toledo. We know he found over recently armed the people of uh, Newi to fight against our own people, to fight against his own brothers. Instead of him finding a solution for his brothers to get liberation, as majority of his brothers are calling for freedom, he decided to, you know, to sabotage that. He always advocated for one Nigeria. I don't know if for his own personal interest, or maybe he felt that one Nigeria is the best option. I feel for his family, he's still just a 53 years old man, so he has never, you know, attempted life. Although, in saying that there's people that have gone, you know, that they gave birth to them today, they died the same day, they died the following day or hour after they gave birth to them. So he has had his own share. But, again, we Igbos, we deserve to get this man to be more longer so that we can be able to source things out from them. They can be an advantage for us when we needed the currency the money to finance your wars, the money to take care of things, they will be advantage. I really empathize what happened to him. He went to London. The, the rate of the sickness, we cannot determine. Now listen, in Anambra, in Ibolan, we have some good doctors in Enugu. Just that they don't want to invest. We have some good Anambra doctors. Young doctors that they can train. These guys can literally train some young doctors from Anambra, from Imo State, from Ebo State, from Enugu, from, you know, from that south, south or southeast, from Asaba, from, um, you know, they can train a doctor. If anybody is capable, he has the money. He can pick up like five or six guys. They train them and build a very nice hospital. And this hospital, poor men can come in, you know, pay maybe 30% of the money to run, to help run the hospital. This, the target was not just for the poor man, but for him, in case things like this. Before Ifan Yoba could have traveled to London, it's already getting late. The sickness have eaten into him. You know, sometimes these politicians, when they do things in Africa, they thought they are doing it for, their, for the poor people, but also they are doing it for themselves. I always say this, the road you refuse to fix today, when you leave office, you may travel it in the next 20 years, and that will not be fixed. Then you'll be causing people. And you, may, you probably have accident there. If you refuse to fix the road from Lagos to uh, Anambra, you say because it's Igbos. No problem. Maybe remember, in the next 20 years, your grandson or your son may be traveling there to visit his friend. What happened? His car break down. Nothing. Then the son will be saying, this is bad road. He did not remember that his father refused to fix that road because of his father's greedy or selfish interest. If I told that his father fixed that road, the son will not have a problem. This is what happened to Ifan Yoba today. If I told that he has a good hospital in Anambra they trust, why will he be traveling to London for medical checkup? So now, who to blame? Do you blame God or you blame Ifan Yoba's ignorance? Our people have failed. They failed so much because they refused to do the needful. That's why they fell. They refused to do the needful. And today we saw what is happening. Iwanyamu was there shouting his own. Iwanyamu sometimes, you know why I say Iwanyamu is his own? Sometimes he comes out to say the truth. Sometimes he refused to say the truth. So his own is another different thing. But if Iwanyamu by his own, is also attacking his people. If I have never come out to fight against the Meiti Anla, he have never come out to fight against our own people getting killed by the military. He's always in defense of the Nigerian government. He have never come out and speak against the young children getting killed. Maybe they want Biafra, or maybe they don't want. It doesn't matter. So you cannot just watch young children getting killed. Let this be a lesson to other politicians. That history will remember you. Whatever you do on this earth, remember that history, your legacy matters a lot. If I knew about another call conference telling people that the Fulani Hesman is a bad news to Igbo people. If I knew about another call a conference demanding immediate release of Mazi Nandekan. So now he died. How do you expect people to mourn him? How do you expect people to talk about him? What legacy have you left for us? How will we remember Ifanyoba? When you listen to my history now, you will know that 
there's nothing much good that I'm remembering from you. But yes, he probably done some good things in his area. He probably done good by arming the boys and asking them to shoot against his own brothers that refused to, you know, accept that they are one Nigeria. If I you, have never called, that's how best way can these people make a dialogue? Because we know in this world, whatever agitation you have, gun and bullet does not solve agitation. What solve agitation is dialogue. What Nigerian government is going to kill? Maybe you kill them, it will go down for two years. The next group will come up again. It will continue again. Until you go on dialogue. If I you, but has the strength. You see, I had Nigerian say he's a philosopher, uh, therapist, he's this and that and that. He has never called his people say, listen, let you guys vote. Okay, let's support this. All his aim is for his own selfish interests. And that is what happened. So, you know, when these people, they live this kind of selfish interest life, when they live this kind of secret life, all their own is about themselves. They will sneak out to go to another country to take medical checkup. Even when they are very sick, they will not let their people know. Then when they die, the news will come back for their people. They will bring their cops home and their people want to celebrate. No. When you are governing people, in suppose when he travel before he travel, his people will be praying for him. If he's a good leader, he couldn't sneak out to London to check for medical checkup. He couldn't sneak out. He could have let his people know where he's going and they will be praying for him and say that may you know may God bless him, may God heal him, whatever he's going there to do, may God, you know, but because they live in this corrupt, corrupt life, they live in this life of oppressing one another, they will sneak out to go and do their medical checkup and come in so people will know. But unfortunately, they are not God. God will always catch them. Now, you guys are hearing today, I had it alive. Four hours, uh, you know, three hours ago that if I your is dead. I said, no, let me confirm it first. A friend told me that, man, another Nigerian politician is dead in London. I said, what happened? He said, do you know Senator Fanny your I said, yes. He says dead. I said, let me confirm it. Then, luckily, Nigerian newspaper start carrying it too. How can you sneak out? In this country, Australia, if the mayor feels that he can't get any medical checkup here, he's going out. News will let people know that he's going out. They either wish him well or they are querying him. Why can't you put that facility here? Why are you so special? So if I never believe that he's the most special person to go to London, grandma, some people cannot go to London. They cannot even buy a flight ticket from Nigeria, from Abuja to Lagos. But this guy can pay to London. Why can't he bring that hospital back home? So that everyone will enjoy that hospital. Even in his own community. Even where he is, the sen their senator. Why can't he do that? Because they live on selfish interests. It is a shame that dead have called them. But it's also a lesson to those greedy politicians that the more they feel this way, one day the most richest area is the grave. If you remember, I made a post last week, my Monday post last week, where I told you that, you know, the more richest place is the grave. That no matter how we do, we'll go there one day. Me, I will, you, we will. But what matters is the legacy we are going to leave. Now you ask yourself, do you, if I ask many people now, what do you think about Ifan Yoba? They will start telling you. They will not be happy. The little life he has on this planet, he, used, he didn't utilize it very well. Do you know how many youths that take, that kill or take other people's life because if I but arm them. Either they shoot the um a non government or they shoot the ESN, they shoot the Bible Liberation Army, or they shoot them. It is the same thing, it doesn't matter who kill each other. It is the same life we are losing because of one man. Today he's gone. And people will mourn for him. We mourn and say what happened? It's a young life. It's a year life that have a um, vision, either to be governor, to lead his people, or to, you know, develop his own business, or be senator for a long time. I really felt for what happened to Ifanyo, but I really felt for him. I, I believe that he has a lot to offer the country, not just Nigeria. He has a lot to offer in the Igbo and Navy. And no matter what happened, we should have this mentality. There's never a good way to take out, you know, great men. 
because we need them later. We will need them later. We need them in future. We don't need to take those people out. We need them, no matter how. We know they have done so many wrong against us. We know because of his fine by ignorance, because of his selfish interest, because of his ambitious to be governor, a lot of youths have died. He have armed a lot of youth against a lot of youths. Can you imagine some family?